Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Craig Peters here from Sound Iron, and on today's Sound Iron session, I'm gonna be walking you guys through a track in the style of a gritty, dramatic action cue. Now, this is a demo that I wrote for Modern Animated Percussion, which is a library we just recently came out with in collaboration with Sample Logic. So I'm gonna go ahead and play through the track, and then we'll go ahead and start deconstructing it. So you can see within this track, there isn't really a lot of different tracks going on. Uh, the cool thing about MAP, or Modern Animated Percussion, is that within each instance you have four different cores that have their own step animator, their own sequences and percussion sounds and different effects and that sort of thing. So it allows uh, MAP to kind of do more of the heavy lifting without having to have so many tracks. Uh, so I have five different tracks here, and then I'm also using two instances of the effects presets that come with Tines and Echoes, and then I also have some real guitars that I recorded in, and uh, just to add a little bit more of some real elements, and uh, being that it's sort of a gritty, dramatic cue sort of thing, um, I was inspired by scores like The Punisher or even some Dave Porter stuff from Breaking Bad. I just wanted to have a little bit more of some organic sounds with also the synth and uh, kind of industrial synthy percussion kind of stuff going on. So the very first little part, it's just map and tines and echoes. So uh, I'll just go ahead and play the instance of map so you can hear that first and then add in some more of the elements from the effects presets from tines and echoes. So this is what we have going on, and the cool thing about this is, as you can see, there's the four different cores. There's cores one, two, three, and four, and all of those correspond to the keys. So if I want to engage all four of them, I can just hit middle C. So you can see that's a pretty instantly easy and, and really cool. And if you only want to use certain elements of the different cores, you can play them individually as well because there's different keys that correspond to the different cores. So if I want to just play core one, so you can see there's a little bit of delay in there too. So that's what I did to start it off. But if you want to just play one or another one, you can just kind of mix them up however you want. So you can see that one's kind of like a low subby pulse. So pretty cool, you can mix them up however you want. And then after that, I'm also layering it with Tines and Echoes. And this one is, uh, it's, it's very subtle, it's just sort of, um, well, the effects preset is called Pulse, so uh, it's just adding some more kind of pulsey elements to it. Uh, with a lot of dramatic stuff, I feel like having as much little subtle and maybe more um, not so subtle elements as far as things to create tension and that sort of thing. I think it's great for uh, if you're if you're scoring for like dramatic television and that kind of thing, like cool underscoring pulsing stuff. Let's just go ahead and listen to how this sounds. Like I said, super subtle. And then the one that I have underneath that, it's uh, this really cool effects preset. It has a, a very gritty and distorted kind of chaotic sound to it that I really like. 
Like at the heart of it, it's melodic, but then there's the sound design elements of it that they give it that sort of strange grittiness. So I think it works pretty cool. It, it, it's a nice way of, of sort of easing into the track. So let's just hear those elements by themselves. So the Tines and Echoes is kind of giving it a little bit more of the melodic element. And then after that is where the guitars come in. Uh, for the guitars, um, let's see, I'll show you guys how I processed them. So I'm using the Fortin Nameless amp sim. And even though this is a high gain metal amp sim, I have it dialed in. I have a preset that I use that I like. It has more of a bluesy sort of plexi Marshall kind of tone. And uh, I wanted to use that just for, because when I think of scores like The Punisher and you know, when you hear like the intro of that score or the, or the TV show, it has a real kind of bluesy guitar vibe. So I wanted to bring that into this track and um, not, not be too overbearing when it comes to the, uh, to the metal stuff, but I wanted it to have a nice bluesy tone to it. So let's just hear the guitars. And the guitars are pretty loose. I wanted them to have a, a more natural feel. And also I have these running through a reverb. I'm using the Valhalla Room. Uh, if you listen to it by itself, the guitars are super dry. Sound really just kind of right there and present. And for the settings, I found this preset called Music Club. Um, I can't remember if I did any tweaks to it, but uh, these are the settings if you want to experiment with it. And uh, so this is with and without. Making it sound like it's in a space somewhere. And then after that, I have a guitar lead and it's just really bluesy, a little bit more distortion on this one because since it's a guitar lead, I wanted to have a little bit more saturation and gain. So this is the settings that I use for that. Still the same, the Fort and Nameless. And uh, let's just listen to the guitars with the lead after in the sort of in the middle section. <laughs> For this, I actually have a little bit more reverb. I'm using Valhalla Vintage Verb on this one. And this is just making it a little bit more ambient sounding. I don't want it to be too direct. It's more of kind of, it's adding a little bit more melodicness to it, but just a little bit more uh, sort of in the background. And uh, this is the reverb that I use for that. And then this middle section is when it gets a little bit more intense. So having a little bit more instances of map. So I have this one up here. And this is how this one sounds. This is a preset called Rising Tide. So you can see with different instances of map, I have certain cores engaged at certain times. You could just go balls to the wall and just kind of have everything going at the same time and it'll probably sound cool if things aren't conflicting too much. But what I wanted to use was certain elements of certain cores and just to sort of find which ones work together. And that's what's cool is it's really easy to just kind of pick and choose and move around which ones you want and see how they work together in context. Uh, so at around bar six is where the second instance of map comes in. So it has kind of like a drumstick clicky sound to it. And then we have another one coming in. And I like how that sounds because it has a little bit more of a riser effect to it, like it's swelling into the next part. And this is from the multi-core preset Criminal Mind. Uh, we all got together and made a bunch of really cool presets. Uh, some, I had certain things in mind, like for the first one, Watch My Six, it, it sort of in that inspiration of like a Call of Duty or more like dramatic um, action espionage kind of things. That's sort of what I had in mind when I made it. Um, so this is what this one sounds like. So I could just go ahead and play a little bit of this. This is all four cores engaged. <laughs> 
So it's cool you hear like those little glitchy things and that's with the step animator which uh, you know you can just kind of go through and just randomize all of them until you find some stuff you like and I like that real those little glitchy things because it makes it easy for me not to have to program it so much and uh, just kind of you know let the step animator do its thing. So that's core one, core two, You can hear this one has a really cool uh, stereo panning thing going on. And the Criminal Mind preset has, has a lot of really cool elements to it as well. Like there's some really, uh, some industrial synth pulses. Cool sort of epic, little glitchy rhythms. That one I like, that one's really fun. And then when you play them all together. So it's super easy to get really cool percussive loops going. And the thing about this is it's not loops because you can turn all of these off. So if you want to turn them into one shots, you can do that. So it's, a, it's another perk of the library. It's pretty, uh, pretty uh, handy if you just want to add in you know one shot hits just for layering or or uh, having a little bit more accents on downbeats and then getting into this last section the guitar goes away and then it's pretty much all map and one instance of tines and echoes so uh, let's just go ahead and listen to that <laughs> So if, if you're listening, uh, hopefully you're listening on some, some pretty decent speakers. So you can really hear there's a lot of elements kind of going from center, left, and right. And it really makes it interesting, at least for me. And that kind of stuff is always fun to do because, you know, when you have stuff playing around in the stereo field, it's it sort of, uh, you know, it, it's very interesting to the ear. But and also in the context of doing stuff where if, let's say, you were scoring this to, to picture and, you know, maybe the the guy arrives to the warehouse where you know the bad guys are and there's things going on you know like how would it be if he was like looking around the corner and you hear all these elements and little things adding to the tension so um you know i think that kind of stuff is it's great for that for that sort of thing so um i'm gonna go ahead and now since this last portion is pretty much all map i'm gonna go ahead and just sort of play through each one and then start adding in each element and each instance so you can hear how they're all working together So very subtle, very subtle, and then you have this next one. That little percussive uh, clicky, sounds like, like drumsticks being hit together, that sort of thing. And then the next one is the Criminal Mind multi-core preset. So this one's just adding a little bit more heavier percussion, uh, still fairly sparse in the way that it's played, but it's you know a little bit more, a uh, little bit more tension being added. And then you have this next portion down here. Now, if some of these are a little bit harder to hear, this one I think was a little bit more of a super subtle. So a little bit more, a little bit, a little bit more subby and subtle, but uh, still really cool. One of the things I try to keep in mind, it, you know, it's very easy to go too far. So with this stuff, it's, it makes it really easy to just kind of layer things in in a way that sits a little bit nicer in the mix. And then this very last one is a preset called Barely Breathing. I actually didn't play through this one. Let's see how it sounds. <laughs> So that one's really cool. It has like this, this sort of. Kind of a, a thicker bell sound with a little bit of 
You can hear that little glitchiness in the background. Sounds cool. That's nice. It almost sounds like a it almost sounds like a dragon in the background or something. Um, and then let's just go ahead now and listen to all of them together. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up for this cue. So you can see how using modern animated percussion makes it really easy. So if you're working on deadlines and time crunches and that sort of thing, it, uh, it's really handy to have. And uh, as well as the effects presets in Times and Echoes, which is a part of the Hopkin Instrumentarium. It's a new series we have in the works with instrument builder Bart Hopkin. A lot of really cool stuff coming up with that one. So if you like this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so you can get notified every time we release a new video. And until next time, I wanna thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon. Take care.